The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Hey everybody, this is The Ash Holes. Each week, they smoke a different cigar, sometimes the same cigar, but mostly different, and they give their honest impression. They always assign an official Ash Holes rating to that cigar. So, pull up a chair, light up, relax, be an Ash Hole too. It's very rewarding. And welcome back to the Assholes, broadcasting live from the Jose Dominguez Cigar Studio. I'm Aaron. I'm joined once again with Matt and Ed, and I can hear the drums echoing in the night. Yeah, I can too. We're smoking the Don Lino Africa. Don Lino Africa. I don't know if anybody's going to get that reference. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know. Oh, no, it's become a meme now, so everybody's talking about it. Yeah. I, don't, I haven't seen that one around too much, though. Yeah, well, it's like everybody throws it in Toto, you know. Yeah. Bless the rains down in Africa. I, I mean, I would say nowadays. at least Ed's generation knows what Toto is. Uh, <laughs> I've heard of that. Yeah. That was the dog on Wizard of Oz, right? Uh, Toto. Yeah, that's, yeah, the that's, one gets that's, eaten that's, by the witch. Toto. Sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, whatever. That's the way it goes, there. right? <laughs> I don't know. I was just listening to the Pink Floyd during it. So. <laughs> yeah, no, that is probably, all jokes aside, one of the more recognizable songs of its generation. Yeah. Uh, I've seen people like emulate that song in so many different ways. Yeah. It's, it made a resurgence for whatever reason, like the last year or so, yeah. like just people doing covers for no reason whatsoever. You know, it was but funny. I mean, it's a good song, I guess, but it was funny. I was online like a while ago and I was watching videos and I saw some guy re you know, like when you get in the car and it will ding when the doors open. Yep. So he, programmed his car that the <laughs> door ding in africa. was africa by toto that's funny and i'm like that takes some dedication like you must really be a big way toto fan. too much time on his hands <laughs> yeah so uh, what's the size on this this is a five and a half by 54 yeah okay um kind of a soft box press so it yeah, doesn't feel too much box. like a 54 it feels a little smaller but. it's not very defined you mm. know what i mean like a like some of like those padrones, you know, they're very yeah, yeah. square. Where it's, it's actually went into a mold, but yeah, this, this is, is definitely is a soft box press. Yeah, soft box press, a little rounded, but nevertheless, it's it's great. It has a nice draw to it. Yeah. So far, I have a a nice subtle subtle pepperiness to it. A little bit of spice. Yep. Um, which yep. is notable spice. Uh, some nice uh, char, like a almost like a a smoky barbecue sauce. I'm getting more like a. Like a charred chicken, you know what I mean? Yep, yep. I like, can be on board with that. Like before the sauce? Yeah, it's like you get that crispy where it just got a little burnt and you're yeah. just eating that crust yeah. off the chicken. Yeah. yeah. I've actually been eating a lot of chicken lately. I'm on a diet. <laughs> so that's why you're thinking about it right now. Yeah, I know. I've been eating like chicken, salad, yeah. a little bit of meat. Uh, very strict diet. Wrapper is very nice. Uh, nice, smooth, perfect wrapper. Yeah, the wrapper Invisible quality. seams beautiful really invisible which usually i'm like yeah it's not really no it's like these are you can't find them yeah you know you're really it's right. pretty impressive actually usually people say it and i'm like yeah it's right there <laughs> the the veins on the on the leaf itself are not too um what's the word i'm looking for prominent yeah yeah it's, it's they're a, they're very smooth excellent down, uh, um, wrapper leaf Almost no, I don't want. I don't know if I want to compare it. To, uh, yeah, no, I will. I will. I mean, it's not the same, but it makes me think of like how smooth the Atabay wrapper is. You know what I mean? It's almost like paper. It's just like it's. This yeah, is like a. This is a nice. Well sorted. <laughs> this is a nice wrapper on here. I yeah. have. To, I have to say, um, the this band, is the band is nice. It really pops. It's got the nice gold A. I metallic. guess that's for Africa. Yeah, <laughs> Africa. I think so. Is that how you spell it with an A? No, uh, I think it's for ash holes. That's true too. Yeah, for today at least. That's true. So, yeah. So it let us down in the end. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right though. It has it has like some gold foil in it. A lot of colors. I like the uh, the zebra detail. That black and white around the top. Yeah, yeah. Giving yep. you that real safari African look. Yeah, which is um, this is called the uh, what was it uh, Pundo Amelia, which is the Pundo zebra. Amelia, yeah, Pundo Amelia, yeah. Which <laughs> I typed it into the translation, and it also means the ass. Mm -hmm. So because I think Pundo's donkey and like then, donkey, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Which is interesting because that's extra fitting for us. <laughs> we uh, we just smoked a uh, the Nesta Miranda special selection a few mm -hmm. weeks ago, which was Cigar of the Year for yep. Cigar Authority, and 
I don't know if I mentioned on that show, I was here when Nestor was here. Yes. And I actually got to meet him. I got to talk to him. Great guy. Yeah. And the, the interview was really funny. You know? like, yeah. I, very I, was, personal scene. I was sitting right over here and I, 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 uh, I got to hear some of his stories about, you know, hunting all the, the exotic animals in Africa. And uh, from what I understand, he has quite the collection back home, mm. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> like uh, hunting in Africa and then shipping the... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Is that, which is like, okay. That's so apparently, like, if I remember correctly, I think if you go down there and you want to hunt, like, a specific animal, you go for it. Mm -hmm. And then if you get it, it's like, okay, you're done. They And you leave. And then they just pack it up and then they send it to you. Mm. So apparently he has uh, quite the collection back yeah. at home, which is Hey, yeah, everybody has their hobbies. Huh? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of sad. For the animals, but yeah, for the animal, but they don't have feelings. Come and on. then at the same time, you know, <laughs> as from the hunter's point of view, though, I mean, that's that's quite the collection of animals. <laughs> people are, I mean, some people are getting mad at us now. <laughs> I mean, it's like around here, like you'll see like bears. Not most of our listeners, but you know, there might be one or two that that are actually you know right, compassionate. Uh, most of his <laughs> stories ended with, and then I shot it, and then I, it just yeah. <laughs> looked at me with a twinkle in its eye, and it was dead in seconds. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but I mean, like around here in New England, you see like deer and bears. Sometimes you'll see moose, but you, know, you go to his house, he's got all these exotic yeah. creatures, and you're like, wow. Hmm, that didn't stroll in your backyard. Yeah, no way. <laughs> Especially down in, I think, where does he live? Miami? Miami, Florida? I would guess. I yeah. think, yeah, he's down in Florida. So, yeah, yeah that the, would make sense. That's where most of these guys <laughs> Yeah, none, <laughs> of, none of them are down guys. there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm loving the cigar so far. Uh, consistent burn. Ash, the burn line is. It's not perfect, but it's it's good. I mean, it's it's, it's good. There's, there's definitely no flaws in the burn. Yeah, line. no yeah. flaws, and uh, you know, like I said before, started with a little bit of pepper, a little bit of spice, got that char taste to it, which is the char is subtle to me. It's it's not very overbearing. I've had a few cigars that have that real deep ashy taste to them. Mm -hmm. I won't mention any names, but just not really a fan. It's just, for me, it's too much. Some guys, they love that. Yeah, I, um, and, you know, sometimes you crave it, too. <laughs> yeah, and some, yeah, you love it, you crave it. For me, it was like, I just can't enjoy this. Mm. And if you can't enjoy it, you know, it's just not worth doing. I mean, that's why you smoke cigars. So, um, yeah. <laughs> <a> very, <laughs> yeah, very, cool. very, very... Like, it's your job now. <laughs> yeah, and, and on very rare occasions, I've, I think I've only done it twice. I've tried a new stick, and you I... put it down? I put it, I put it, like, right down. I've done it, yep. like, it's yeah. Well, once you get over 30 years into this smoking thing, mm. I put a lot of them down. If, yeah, <laughs> if especially not, you. You're, you're pretty uh, strict on the... Uh... If I'm not enjoying <laughs> it, I figure, okay, at this point, I only have X number left. Yeah. And I don't yeah. know what that number In is, lifetime, but I'm not yeah. going to waste one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> could be I, tens of thousands, but... It could be, but... This, I don't want this to know. be one of them. <laughs> I can tell you right now that Ed has probably never wasted a Neanderthal. That's one cigar I know that he... I smoke those pretty much to the yeah. bitter end. I not mean, that they're bitter at the end. Right. It's mm. an expression, not a description of flavor. Yeah. yeah. You got that. Yeah, we oh, would, yeah. Yeah. we yeah. wouldn't want to ruin Ed Sullivan's opinion <laughs> on the Neanderthal. Well, <laughs> I think he would want to ruin other people's opinions, so there's more for him. So. Well, yeah. This is also true. It's <laughs> a supply issue. Yeah, this is also true. I, yeah, I think it's those. a very unique cigar, and only I will like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nobody else should ever smoke no. it. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Romacraft, keep, keep making those. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Just for me. Yeah. I'll buy them. Yeah. Uh, profits are the same. You keep buying them all, right? <laughs> so this cigar that we are smoking today is, um, as we said before, the Toro size. Uh, it can be found at the number two guys cigars dot com for ten nineteen per cigar. Mm. Um, very good price. I mean, it's, it's that's a good price point for I think the quality oh, of the absolutely. cigar. Yeah. I mean, I've had a I've had a cigar of this quality and I've paid more. Uh, so it's definitely a great buy. Yeah, I just hit the five inch mark and I got a blast of sweetness. So I'm. Excited about getting further into it. I've had a, the Robusto size, whatever that's really called, and they have the different names, but it's a Robusto. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I enjoyed that. This one has obviously more transition because it started off more spice and smoke, and now I'm getting some sweetness. Yeah, that, that original flavor for me is is coming is coming down now. I'm not really getting sweet. I'm getting more, I don't know, like a toasted almond, which I mean is... I mean, I okay. guess I mean that's kind, kind of a kind of sweet, sweet. It's but it's like cherryish, but, but more on the nutty side, yeah. not so much like a like a sugary sweet, you know? 
Yeah, I'm not really. Well, actually, you know, now that you put the idea in my head, <laughs> I can kind of agree with that. The placebo effect. Yeah. <laughs> well, some, yeah. Uh, what is it? Subliminal messaging. Or, yeah. <laughs> was it ultra liberal. Uh, yeah, like liminal. <laughs> like toasted almond, or have you ever had those like those toasted coconut chips? Uh, I don't know. Those are Doesn't those are good. Familiar. Yeah, they. I, I actually had them recently. We went from almonds to coconuts. So I'm, I'm, <laughs> you're, you're losing me. <laughs> well, no, because they're kind of similar. Like the, the those toasted coconut chips. If you've never had them, you would know what mm. I'm talking about. But like like a toasted almond, maybe like those toasted like those little chips. They have like a very unique flavor. All to I can them. think of is almond joy now. <laughs> almond joy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what do we do? Top five. Yeah. Aloha! Today's top five is brought to you by Five Five Cigars. Choose from the mild white label, the medium strength red label, or the full bodied and full flavor blue label. Series Five Five has it all. Five Five equals the perfect 10, and that's what you get every time. The only thing better than a Five Five cigar is two of them, so you can share with a friend. And now, here's today's top five list. So, today's top five. I wanted to touch on something that came up in a conversation I had with a friend recently over like, what's your favorite size, shape okay. of cigar? And so I, I put together a list of my top five favorites. Okay. And I figured I would share it with you guys here today. So at number five, I have the Pyramid. Okay. Which is, I know, it's an interesting. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just unusual. <laughs> it, it is unusual. I'm surprised it made a top five. Um, but I've had quite a few of them and I enjoyed them. Okay. Usually, Which uh, like, brand? Because I mean, there's only so many that come out. <laughs> um, I think they were made by Arturo Fuente. Yeah. Okay. So there's, I won't go too much into detail, but uh, Arturo Fuente, I think, was the manufacturer of the ones that I've had. Uh, normally, they're about like six by forty, and then they at the it tapers, at the, it tapers like up a to like a like a fifty two around like by the time you get to the foot. Oh, yeah. Um, around, yeah. And number four, I had the Corona. Which Love the Corona. Is kind of among the standard sizes. Yeah, and I think that's my go-to for like if, if there's a cigar that I've already enjoyed, I'm definitely going for the Corona. You know, it's, it's if it's One available. One of my favorites. It. Yeah. yeah, they all got uh, bigger ring gauge over the years and yeah. are still called Corona. I'm like, I don't always want to commit that much time to that cigar. <laughs> and sometimes they'll go to a Corona Gorda if it's you know 46 or yep. so. Now I, I think the the respected size like five and a half by 42 for mm -hmm. corona yeah. but yeah and again like it, which kind of segues into my number three which was going to be the robusto which also it is a four and three quarter by 48 four sometimes five but again that's a those two cigars i feel i know a couple off the top of my head where they're listed as that size, but they're not it's not really a robusto yeah or, like yeah, or not really a corona yeah like the christoph shade grown i the Robusto is more almost like a Toro. It's it's a little long, yeah. a little Five bigger. A, a lot of them are doing a 52 now for Robustos yeah. and yeah. Toros. I don't know if it's just people... Just kind of pushing the limits in all yeah. the angles, ring, ring gauge and length. Yeah, I just feel like it's that whole American mentality, bigger is better, and I think it's... I don't know. Maybe people just... I mean, it, it, maybe it, it's better for the blend, and they don't want to mm -hmm. like, turn people away, which, fine, okay. <laughs> That's true, too. But, uh, and, you know, coming up with a different name for each of the different sizes and variations... <laughs> Yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> well, or you, yeah, know, yeah. you have a zebra. Yeah, and, yeah. and nobody's asking for the zebra. <laughs> oh, and they'd be. Yeah, do you guys have any of those, uh, the Don Lino, uh, is it the is, ass? Is that yeah, the yeah. Don Lino ass? <laughs> Give me some of that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, let's say Toro. <laughs> at number two, had the Churchill. Another pretty popular size, and I think. They, don't, they don't sell the way they used to yeah, at, at yeah. all. Like, yeah, I, I avoid Churchills just in general. When I first got it's into too, smoking, too I was really into them, and then I kind of gravitated more towards like the robustos and the uh, the toros and the double coronas. Mm -hmm. But uh, I feel like for a long time there, though, the Churchill was a very popular size. It was a mainstay, mm -hmm. but I still will enjoy one from time to time, uh, especially if I, you know, I'm, I want like a longer smoke. I'm going to be sitting around for a lot longer. Yeah, if I come like doing a task and you know it's more of like a working cigar. Yeah, I'm going to go I for mean, something long that'll just last me. You don't have and to for me, light. sometimes if they have a robusto, a Toro, and a Churchill, I like the smaller ring gauge, so I might That's pick up too, yeah. the Churchill. Yeah. That's uh, and the other thing is too is, is especially if you're if it's like a particular cigar with a particular blend that maybe 
you you want you sometimes you know like for me I smoke kind of fast so I'll sometimes I'll do two but if I want that same amount of time of smoking but I don't want to have to have two different cigars you, know, you go with the Churchill that little bit of more length smoke it a little slower that kind of fills in my gap mm-hmm. I would say uh, but a number one I'm gonna say it's got to be the Toro uh, for me at least uh, I think the Toro is my favorite size it's hmm. definitely my go-to uh, this is we're smoking a to- kind of a Toro today kind of a Toro yeah um, and I feel like the Toro size is kind of popular right now I just feel like most people be. I, I don't know see... I have to look at sales figures yeah it, it yeah. is um, you know it's really Toros and Robustos yeah and a lot of times you'll see now the pricing yeah you know, I was looking at one today, and the Toro was twenty cents more than the Robusto. Yeah, so it's like so, mm, negligible. You know, yeah. I think yeah, depending on the pricing, sometimes makes sense. they're driving people to the Toro just right. when they look at it and say, "Well, for twenty cents, I get all that." That's I, true. Yeah, I think uh, looking at a list like if we're looking at for quality, uh, a um, torpedo would probably be my number one because I mean right. that's usually going to be the best blend, or the best you know best rolled. Uh, typically, and you can choose the ring gauge that you're smoking through. So, like, yeah. all sorts of pluses on that. I mean, a, a lot of the blenders blend for a Toro first. Yep. You Makes know, sense. So, that often is what their intent was yeah. mm-hmm. for the blend. Doesn't mean that that's going to be your favorite size, but right. that's the one they typically blend for. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I smoke a lot of Toros. I would say 75% of the cigars I do smoke uh, are Toros, but, you know, I do bounce around, you know, like mm-hmm. I said before, you know, sometimes, you know, a good Robusto is, is all you need. And sometimes there's a, a Churchill, like I said, on occasion for me, but I still like them, but I don't smoke them a lot. That's why, I, you know, I included it. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah. um, and some of them that are really on the stronger side, mm-hmm. sometimes I'll look and say, well, I don't want a Toro in, in that <laughs> yeah. blend. I, I want to be functional a after this. Yeah. <laughs> that happened to me. Yeah. <laughs> so, when I, as I said before, when I first started smoking, I one of the first Toros I had was the uh, the pissed off Kristoff. Oh yep. Mm-hmm. And I came in. I was downstairs, Oof. <laughs> and someone showed it to me, and I was like, "Yeah, great!" And I got the Churchill, and I smoked it, and I loved it, and uh, I didn't realize how strong it was. Tasted I, it up in the room spun. <laughs> yeah. So well, it, and and I was new, so I didn't really yeah. like know how strong it could be. So I was and like, somebody directed you to that. Yeah, I think. Oh, that's just mean. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember who it was, but someone did, and I was like, "Oh, I'll take a whole box from because they were a box of ten. Yeah. and I was like, "Oh, I love that. I'll take a box." And I went home and I had another one, and that it, didn't end well. No, you, that day you was learn real ruined. Quick. Um, <laughs> that day was ruined. Down. And then someone oh, told me they were like, "Yeah, you can't do two pissed off Churchills in one day." Yeah, and especially if you're smoking fast. If you're new to cigars and you're going to be smoking faster than you should. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, oh gosh, yeah, that sounds like a nightmare. Even, even which that. Particular... But you still smoke cigars, so I guess I went. You know, kind of. <laughs> but that particular blend is strong as it is. I mean, when the firecracker came out last year, mm-hmm. um, I was here for the launch event. I got a, I got a box, maybe two boxes, and. I left for Las Vegas the next day, and mm-hmm. I took them with me. And I was out in Las Vegas with John Fozzie from Christoph yep. Cigars. And I remember we were smoking them together. And even the firecrackers, which is not that big, yeah, it's- I had a couple of those one night with John. And I was like, I mean, <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> if you, I mean, you're talking a couple of them. You put two of them, mm-hmm. and you got a full cigar. <laughs> yeah. And they're strong to begin with. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm really excited for this year's firecracker. To come I am out. too. Yeah, the really Perdomo excited. firecracker. I yeah, definitely. I've been wanting a Perdomo firecracker for years now. So, and uh, I yeah, think I'm not going to say I had one yesterday, but but you I may have, have one anyways. yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think uh, David posted one online. Yes, he, he did. Had, yeah. So yeah, I saw him <laughs> take that picture. I was in the right place at the right time. And oh, of course, scored one of those. Yeah, a weasel move. Huh? <laughs> but uh, just, just I, keep hanging around, Dave. I think we'll be doing that on the show uh, in the next few months, which would be interesting too. Cool. All right, why don't we go to break and we come back? We'll continue smoking the Don Lino Africa. Only Great Leaf makes great cigars. Aganor Salif stands out because of the distinctive mouth-watering flavors of the Corojo 99 and the Criollo 98 seeds cultivated by Cuban agronomists on the best lands in Jalapa and Esteli, Nicaragua. When you smoke one of the JFR, JFR Lunatic, 
Guardian of the Farm or Casa Fernandez cigars, you will experience the unique taste and aroma that makes Aganor Salif different than any other tobacco in the world. Smoke one today and enjoy the signature flavor of Aganor Salif. Hello, cigar aficionados. This is Klaus Kellner from Davidoff Cigars. I invite you to taste the elements with Davidoff Escurio, Nicaragua, and Yamasa. From water comes originality. Savor the sweet and spicy originality of the Davidoff Escurio tobaccos born by the rains of Bahia, Brazil. From fire comes intensity. Enjoy the bittersweet aromas and fiery intensity of the Davidoff Nicaragua. From earth comes complexity. Taste the earthy flavors and complex spices that are unique to the red soil of the Yamasa region in Dominican Republic. Only Davidoff Master Blenders could take the power of nature and blend it into a range of exceptional cigars. Each element making each cigar a unique experience. Water, fire, earth. Flavors that have risen from the very world itself. I hope you enjoy them as much as I do. Davidoff Cigars. Cigar adventures to a wider world. Looking for a mild cigar? Don Rafael is just that. Solidly constructed, and it offers up a mellow experience that holds a ton of universal appeal. This is just one of the reasons for Don Rafael's enormous success. Looking to get your friend into smoking cigars? The Don Rafael cigar is absolutely the right choice. The brand originally set out to outdo the competition, but for the price, there is no competition. You can't beat Don Rafael, it outsells them all. Don Rafael can be enjoyed any time of the day, all day, and cigar after cigar. The Don Rafael has a smooth, mellow aroma that will not linger. Draped in a seamless golden brown Connecticut wrapper, Dominican long fillers, and a Dominican binder complete the blend. Expect earthy notes with some hints of cedar throughout. And as far as quality everyday blends go, for a mild cigar smoker, it doesn't get more satisfying than this. Remember this, Don. Don Rafael. Aging Room 4 Nicaragua Maestro. Named Cigar Aficionado's number one cigar of the year with a 96 rating, is a complex Nicaraguan puro carefully blended by Rafael Nodal and made by A.J. Fernandez. As Cigar Aficionado described it, every puff is an overture of flavors that's at times heavy and rich with notes of dark chocolate and wood, and other times subtle and understated with hints of fine caramel and toasted almonds. Treat yourself to an aging Room 4 Nicaragua today. Surgeon General work. Tobacco smoke increases the risk of lung cancer and heart disease, even in non-smokers. Bohemian is the original Brazilian big ring gauge cigar with the unfinished foot, curly tailed head and value, value, value. There are Brazilian reasons to buy and smoke Bohemian and here are just a few. Created in the Cuban tradition, this lush, dark Brazilian Maduro leaf surrounds a five-year-old Sumatra binder with Dominican and Nicaraguan well-aged long filler leaves. So, what you do expect from a Bohemian? A departure from the conventional. A flavorful journey into sweet, nutty, almost caramel finish. Bohemian, the original, unconventional cigar. Take a journey. When was the last time you experienced something for the first time? Curiosity drives discovery. Discover exceptional tobaccos aged to perfection with Balmoral Inejo XO. Born from passionate curiosity, Balmoral invites you to discover the optimal balance of sophisticated complexity and smoothness. Each meticulously crafted, extensively aged Inejo XO cigar blend is the result of a relentlessly global search for the top 5% of select premium tobaccos available, including our exclusive signature Brazilian Mata Norte. Crowned with a sun-grown Brazilian Arapiaca wrapper, Balmoral Añejo XO embraces your palate with complex notes of cedar, cacao, and peppery spices that finish with a smooth, underlying natural sweetness. We invite you to discover and experience Balmoral Añejo XO today. And we're back live in the Jose Dominguez Cigar Studio. We're smoking the Don Lino Africa. And while of your attention, go over to Instagram and follow us at the Ash at Assholes Radio. Excuse me. 
Uh, and follow us on Facebook at The Ashels, if you couldn't figure that out. Yeah. Yeah. Check us out. We're on there. Why not? Give us a follow. Give us a like. Share the episodes with your friends. Make sure they see it. It's good stuff. Yeah, yeah make sure. Like, <laughs> hold their faces to the screen. Watch this. Even if they don't smoke cigars. No. Force watch them. <laughs> hey, you don't know. I mean, you, you tell people about it, and maybe you get someone into smoking cigars who wasn't into it before, you know? Maybe. Or maybe they'll just unfollow you. Whatever. Yeah, or they'll just ignore you. <laughs> yeah, know. that's that's the, the goal. Is Could be a way to weed out some hate. friends, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's never a bad thing to weed out some people <laughs> in your life. <laughs> yeah. uh, cigars performing really well. Uh, I feel like the flavors kicked up a lot, so it's definitely full flavored. Yeah, I was just going to say, mine just went back up. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to steal a term from El Presidente, Dave Portnoy, Marshall Swartz. Getting a little bit of tang. A little t- <laughs> <laughs> Get a little bit of tang. Little tang. <laughs> Can you define tang for me? <laughs> no, <laughs> no uh, I would describe it as uh, licorice. It's, no, I'm not it's getting got licorice. That, yeah, yeah, definitely yeah. getting a licorice flavor. I love licorice. I agree so. with you on the tang. Yeah, I can't really like put my thumb on it. Like a, you can feel it on your tongue. Mm. Well, that's what licorice does to me. So. No, you know, it, I don't want to say citrusy, but it's got no. that feel to it. Hmm. Not tang the astronaut drink. No, no. Yeah, no, no. Like tangy, like a yeah. like a tangy, yeah, yeah. like a tangy sauce. What tangy's named after? Yeah. Uh, yep, tangy. T- tamarind. <laughs> huh? Tamarind. 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 Uh, I yeah. don't know if I could pull it out. You couldn't pull out that <laughs> no. flavor. Not a no. big, you know. Couldn't pull that one out. I don't play out. with a lot of spices. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just it's definitely a spice, but it's not like a traditional spice. Mm. It's something. It's kind of unique. Yeah. Like I said, tang. Like that. Not too sweet, but not too sour. It's like right in the middle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not licorice, though. Licorice is kind of a, that's a strong taste. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm getting. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I, I don't yeah, really know how to describe it's, that either. It's it, it's kind of tangy. It's, it's mm-hmm. almost got that, that kind of, some of the same elements. Did you say black licorice? Yeah, of course, black licorice. There's no other licorice. <laughs> well, there's red licorice. <laughs> that's not licorice. That's just <laughs> candy. <laughs> that's that's a, the licorice is the plant or whatever it comes it's extracted from something like jaeger is kind of like kind of like like anise is it's a very similar flavor as well yeah 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 yeah. no that's true yeah yeah uh yeah and yeah jaeger would be a a more of a licorice flavored yeah i can't do jaeger either uh yeah i college days i haven't haven't touched so you're used to but you've retired it from your yeah i've retired it was it was (laughs) was too enjoyable (laughs) i had it one time and i was like I don't know how people do this. This is just too much for me. <laughs> no. But, which is, I mean, I am German and it is a, a German uh, drink, but, you know, the, and I'm, I'm very like into like my German heritage too, but that's like one thing. But just I, not that. Much. I draw the line at, at the Jägermeister. I'm like, yeah, I just can't do it. How about later hosen? Do you draw the line there? Later hosen? Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't do that. No. I grew up eating a lot of like, Bratwurst, is it, is liverwurst. Is it uh, traditionally German or was it from Austria? Like it's, it's it, Bavarian. 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 It's Bavarian until just that, that yes. regional. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Specific to the country. I guess yep. that makes sense. You know, the mountains, that makes it's what you want to wear or something. Yeah, like southern <laughs> Germany. Yeah. 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 Southern Germany. Um, what do we do, Old Fart Friday? You think we should? I think it's time. Really? All right. Okay. Well, it's time once again to get delighted with Old Fart Freddy. Brought to you by Cuban Delight Cigars. This is Old Fat Freddy, and if you know me, you know I was delighted with the good old days when life was simpler and cheaper. Did you hear they're trying to get rid of plastic bags now? I'm old enough to remember when they got rid of paper bags for plastic bags, because they wanted to save the trees. Now they want to save the fish. And I always use the paper bags to wrap my fish, and now I'm too confused to go food shopping. I don't know what to do. Am I supposed to stop eating fish or what? I'm cheap, so I love Cuban Delight Cigars, a perfectly good everyday cigar, handmade in the Dominican Republic, from the pieces left over from the high-end cigars. For a quick buck, I can enjoy a Cuban Delight. Cuban Delight Cigars. For a quick buck? (laughs) Yeah, I think uh, (laughs) Freddie gets confused now. (laughs) Yeah. Somehow he went from bags to fish and shopping. Yeah, it, well, it, that's part of the age. Yeah, you should relate, right? <laughs> yeah. Maybe we should have a talk with him, say, Freddie, you know. Maybe, because even I couldn't follow that, really. I was just it's saying. Like, save the fish, so you use the plastic bag? Yeah, okay, I'm yeah. lost, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. Although I will say, I've seen a lot more paper bags come back now. Yeah, 
So, I mean, you see they're reusable. They're all kind of useless. You just wind up keep buying more. Then all of a sudden it's bringing me back to the days of, you know, I'm a kid. I got to go get the groceries out of the car. Mm-hmm. Yep. And you can carry a lot more in the plastic bag, True. right? Because yep. you can grab five just, per hand. Oh, yeah. To, or just like right. right up your arm. and. But it's true. not working with these paper bags. No. And they got more get, weight in them, too. Yeah. And when they get wet, they you st- paper bag gets a little wet, <laughs> gone. Yeah. Yeah, they're not very... That's uh, a good point. Don't be bringing the groceries in, in the them. rain. That happened to me. I was I went to the store at work, and I work in Boston, and I went to Kenmore Square, and it was raining out, and I had to get a bunch of things, and they gave me a paper bag because now they have oh, the monsters. they have the plastic bag ban in yeah. Boston now. But do they do really? When did that? Happen? Yeah, like if you want I like a, if Boston you want plastic, they charge you like ten cents. Yep. I think given the ten something cents, like that. <laughs> um, or maybe it's ten cents yeah. bag. There's, I don't know. Some places, yeah. I know but whatever it is, really they have paper bags now, and I had a whole bunch of stuff, and the paper bag. I'm like, oh, paper bag, okay. Yeah, and it thanks. was raining out, and I got halfway over the bridge that goes towards Fenway Park, yep, yep. and it just it started to break on me, and I was like, this is not going to oh. be good. Right in the middle of the street. <laughs> Come on, maybe that you know, guy. I think next time I'll just say, okay, give me a hundred of them. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just going to go quadruple throw them bag in the those, trash. Please? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Man, that's crazy. I guess it's easier to recycle paper. Yeah. Yeah, and save the animals. save the fish, you know. Which I mean, I think most of the plastic trash is not coming yeah. from the U.S. It's, I don't know that the plastic the bags are affecting the fish. No. I wasn't sure I mean, about that. The straw bins, all these things, are like the plastic, right. it's not coming from here. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I read it. I read something yesterday that said the number one polluted item in the world is cigarette butts. Mm-hmm. So to kind of bring it back into so, tobacco. More, Different kind of tobacco, cigars, but less, less cigarettes, more cigars. Yeah, so I mean, if you really want to be eco-friendly and you really want to save the animals, smoke cigars. Put the cigarettes away. The cigarettes are horrible for you anyway. You should be quitting that regardless. <laughs> but switch to the cigars; they're more right. eco-friendly. Right. I mean, if I'm leaving one outdoors, I take the band with me. Yep. And yeah. And it's, it's just leaves. Yeah. I mean, it's, the rest is it's paper, but it's, it's like, right. Yeah, you don't want to throw it in a dry field or something. <laughs> no, no. No. Make the neighbors a little upset. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's back in its natural habitat. Yeah. It's, it's out, leaves outside. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I would, yeah, I wouldn't recommend throwing it in somebody's neighbor's yard. But See, that's a good point. If it was in your backyard. Outside, it's not gonna hurt imagine that. That'd be like if you're driving, right? And they have no band on it, mm-hmm. and you throw it out the window, and someone's like, "Oh, you just littered." No, I didn't. I returned it back to yeah, nature. It's like, it's like I wouldn't re- recommend doing that, anyways. Just in general, it just doesn't look. You don't yeah. want people getting bad impression and of even, cigar smokers. Even you shouldn't throw handfuls of oak leaves out the window. Exactly. Either. Yeah. It's no, like, but you understand the point. I'm intentionally but missing in, it. Yeah. <laughs> like, like I wouldn't be thrilled about seeing somebody throw an apple core out the window. It's like eh, it's just not a good idea. Right. It's a, it's like it, it'll disintegrate yeah. back into it's the like, world sure, well, but it's it's the principle you know it's like uh, it's tacky. you're gonna throw something out of a moving car it's just a bad idea <laughs> <laughs> like uh anchorman throwing a burrito out the window hitting, hitting the guy <laughs> oh, next burritos to you. are fine oh, yeah well, people are happy to see a burrito I mean, especially if you get a bad one who wants to eat that throw it out the <laughs> this window. burrito is filling but i can't finish it <laughs> 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 a torpedo coming out <laughs> Uh, so let's do a rating. Yeah. Why don't you go first? I'm going to go 93. Uh, interesting. Yeah. Lots of flavor. It's had some transitions, which I'm always a fan of. Construction is perfect. Uh, no issues whatsoever. Uh, burn is great. Uh, and the strength isn't too overpowering. So with this much mm. flavor, uh, you know, I would almost give it takeaway points if it was too overpowering strength wise. But, uh, yeah, having a good time. So I'd go 91 because it's a very good cigar. And the flavor profile on it is good. It's just not quite the flavor notes. Just not your preference. Yeah. Okay. But it's Fair a enough. good. But it's a good cigar. Mm-hmm. Good quality. Good flavor transitions. Great construction. Um, so I have you know I, I have to give it that. Mm. It's just for me personal taste. It's not exactly where I would be, but. I do smoke them from time to time. Yeah. It's not, it's not, don't get me wrong, it's not a cigar, I just wouldn't smoke. Mm-hmm. I do smoke these, but I just, I smoke them on occasion. If it was the summer, I might have given it a lower score, because when it's cold out, I want the more full flavored. Yeah, and that's kind of like what we talked about me. with bourbon, <laughs> yeah. I think, last week when we had the vodka, it was kind of like bourbon was mm. a little more in the winter time, vodka's more summer, that whole lighter, mm-hmm. heavier type thing. Now that you say that, it's got to, that sourness. Hmm. Mm. Of you know a sour mash whiskey or something. Mm. 
I could get on board yeah, with that. Everybody loves that mouth sound. <laughs> Maybe if you paired it with whiskey. What whiskey, though? <sighs> it's hard to say. Would you go Tennessee whiskey? Would you go? I, I think you should. Yeah. I would. I would go with something peaty, uh, like a peaty scotch. Oh, I that think might that might would work nice. pretty well. Yeah, that might work nice too. Okay, because huh. that's a that's a whole different. You know, when you get into scotch, mm-hmm. such a different flavor profile. A lot more strength. Yep. Obviously, and I think it it could hold up to that. Yeah. No, I I could I would agree with that. I don't I don't think I could put it with. Uh, I don't know if I'd put it with bourbon. Mm, I don't know. Uh, I'd preferably put it with a. I, I think you're right. I think you're onto something with the scotch because I think it because of its a it's peaty a, scotch. It's got to be something that yeah. can hold its own. You know. Yeah, I would. I would agree with that. But I would also agree with the with the with like the Tennessee whiskey too. That sour mm-hmm. mash, that charcoal filtered. Yeah. Yeah, like like Jack Daniels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I would say it could it would pair nice. It, it's a different pairing, but I think it holds up to those. Yeah, and it, well. it would be complimentary, you know. Thing. Yeah, Ed, what do you got? Um, and I was going with this anyway, but it's quite fortuitous. I'm picking a 92, which will make the math. You just want to be right. Simple. Yeah. <laughs> that's like a 95 right for Ed. The you know what I mean? I that's know, that's yeah. a high score for Ed. I, I think it's a very interesting cigar. Yes. You know? Yeah. We certainly had a lot of discussion around the flavor of this. So yeah. I think it's a good cigar to sit down when you have some time to contemplate. Yeah. yeah. Remember, this was a cigar that I don't know if it was different. Because it was before my time, but it w- at one time the Don Lino Africa was a cigar in in the line, and then it disappeared for a while, and it has now come back. It's come back. Mm-hmm. So okay, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad it's here. It, mm. I, I do enjoy it. Uh, like I said, great construct. I'm sure you have probably had the original Don Lino, right? I don't recall smoking that. No, yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, you know, I may would have been before my time. So if I did. Didn't stick in my head. Hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's true. But this is worth <laughs> shot, giving a shot, so. Yeah. No, I'm definitely happy with this one, though. All right. You've been listening to The Assholes, broadcasting from the Jose Dominguez Cigar Studio. Go over to unitedpodcastnetwork.tv, and you can download our past episodes and also see some other great podcasts. That's right. We will see you next week. Stay smoky. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.